Good morning, Bella Vista and visitors, and welcome to the closing summary of the Bella Vista Care Stewardship Class. My name is Brother Michael Allen, and this is Sister Queen Martin. And we have two guests with us this morning. We have Brandon Park, Gerald Wingate, and this is going to be a uh, this is going to, this, this this was a surprise, y'all, because <laughs> this has been our captive audience that has been the team, and this is our. <laughs> This is our part of our video team, and we uh, got them in to see what, if what they learned from the class, and they were anxious, and we appreci appreciate them coming in to help us. May we pray. Oh, Father in heaven, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, oh, Father God, we just thank you, God, for being a good God, Father, in spite of us, oh, Lord. God, we just thank you, God, for, God, we just, God, we can't say thank you enough, oh, Lord, because, Father, we know, God, that if it had not been for you on our sides, Lord, where would we be? And God, we just thank you, God, for these young men joining us this morning. Father, we thank you, Father, for this, for this, for this professor, Father, who's teaching this class for the glorification of you, Father, and the fulfillment to help your children. Again, God, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Father. We can't do anything without you. And Father, these blessings we want to ask in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Mr. Martin. Well, hello, everyone. Once again, we're excited that you made the entire journey with us. Yes. And we just want to say, when we started this, this is our textbook. It's uh, Say Yes to No Debt. And we're talking about the D free uh, movement, which the D stands for debt, deficiency, and delinquency. Mm -hmm. And so we wanna do just a summary right quick. When we started off, we talked about the fact that uh, this book previously was titled Bake Breaking Free from Financial Slavery. And, uh, you know, when we hear that term slavery, we don't like it, but we put ourselves in financial slavery and think nothing of it. So the book is broken into four levels. Level one was getting started. First, you have to admit the problem. Mm -hmm. Then you address the mess. You start listing what your, re uh, your responsibilities are. Then you have to adjust your attitude. Until we do a mind shift, we really won't get anything accomplished. Level two is get control. You gotta start the plan, you gotta make a plan and start using it. You gotta steer the power and you have to set the timer. You gotta set some schedules and uh, decide when you want to accomplish certain things. Mm -hmm. Level three, after you've got the plan kind of going, you wanna maximize the margin where you start making power payments and start doing things at a more accelerated pace so that you can minimize your stress and you can maintain your focus because you know after we start something we can get tired quick so what do we do to make sure that we stay on track and maintain the focus and then level four is investing in others giving back investing in others igniting deep free, debt free living well deep free living within your community and our society and then impacting the culture taking it as far as we can take it and especially into our church which we know that, uh, you know, we are excited about the fact that our pastor, Pastor <coughs> Jacarthy Davis, uh, brought this program to us with stewardship because he understands the value of it and that as Christians, in order for us to become more Christ-like and really fulfill the purpose that Christ has for our lives, we need to get our finances under control. And then that way we can be a, a blessing to the church and to our community and things like that. So at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Allen, and we're going to get started with our guest. Amen. And uh, like I say, this was our captive audience, <laughs> our captive audience, and they were our video team. So uh, I guess I guess just starting off with uh, one of the one of the questions. Uh, who wants to start off? Uh, yeah, Brandon. Okay, go on, Brandon. All right. Uh, what class, what, I, I, I guess what, what we, what one of the questions, Brandon, was uh, what scripture that we talked about during this class, what scripture jumped out at you the most? Well, actually, uh, it was the scripture that you had just mentioned. I had to look it up just because I didn't know what the, the okay. verse uh, was, but it's uh, Matthew 19 and uh, 20, 24, and that's actually what you were referencing to Brother uh, Michael about, um, that it's... Uh, uh, and again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Okay. And uh, just the reason that I use this scripture is just because uh, 
particularly when you uh, have money or you uh, come into money, sometimes it's hard to be generous with that or to uh, share with others. So um, just in talking about money, I feel that that's a good scripture just because uh, I feel that that's something that a lot of people can relate to, you know, maybe getting money or have a little money, get a stimulus check or something, you know, mm -hmm. you spend it all on yourself, blow it all on yourself as opposed to, you know, doing something for the area that you live in or something for your children or something like that. So. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. And you, Jill? Um, <clears throat> I would pretty, say, pretty much say the same scripture um, because, yeah, money is, it's not everything, but it is everything, if that makes sense. Okay. But what do you, what you do with your money, um, that makes the difference. Okay, that's 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 good answer. Question, sister, did you have you want to ask the next question? Sure. Since you all have been listening to us, we hope that uh, you've been impacted and you've learned something from what we've been talking about. So you all are young men, the heads of your families. We know that you know uh, men should be the head of the family and should be leading the way. So I think that a lot of people, you know, you can influence a lot of people. So what are your financial goals? Do you have any? And have we, has listening to this uh, session, you know, changed anything with you? Um, I, and I'll, I'll get to my goals in just a second. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of listening in the class and things that you take away, anything that I learn or look at or learn from, I'm always taking away something. So even if it's something small or something large, um, I, I guess I couldn't just necessarily put a finger on what I have taken away, but um, just being here with the both of you, I, I know I definitely have taken away, even if it's little tidbits of stuff. Um, just personal goals for myself. Um, it is a personal goal of mine that I would like to make my family a uh, millionaire or millionaires, um, and then to um, pretty much be free of all debt, so um, of any creditors, lenders, of any of that uh, type of deal. Okay, great. And, and, and you know what, Brandon, it, it, it was the, the something that you just said, you said about making your family a millionaire. But before that, the scripture that you said was talking about a rich man mm -hmm. and how not to let riches control you. Right. But for you and your family to control riches and you those riches for God. And and that and that's that's one of the that's that's one of the that's that's one of that's hitting the nail on the head is one of the things that we want to get out of the, the for us to get out that that God doesn't care and and I'm gonna jump on this that that Matthew six and thirty three and say seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness yeah. and all other stuff He give to God don't care what we have mm -hmm. as long as we put Him first right. yes, and that's thank you thank you Daryl I'm sorry. Oh. What I, one thing I took away was um, controlling my frivolous spending. Okay. Uh, <laughs> ooh, as a young man, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that I spend money on that I really don't need to spend money on, mm -hmm. but because I want it, because I have the money to spend it on, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to go buy it. Spend. But <laughs> it's not, a lot of times it's not what we need. Fortunately, um, bills are paid first. Okay. okay. Take, care, take that out the way, but... Instead of spending them on frivolous stuff, I mm -hmm. can put it back into my savings to help me with my future. Um, mm -hmm. I've been invested in 401k since my first uh, full-time job once I got mm. out of high school wow. um, nice. at the age of 18. Uh, so I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm scared to touch it because I don't like paying penalties. <laughs> but uh, sometimes that frivolous spending be like, hmm, I might want to <laughs> go take that penalty. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. And, and go on, you're so Okay, well, I'd just like to say that, you know, both of you all seem like you were already conscious and aware of financial situations and, you know, doing some planning uh, before, but uh, how about your surround, people that surround you, your peer group? Do you know people who maybe are not in as good a shape as you or that mm -hmm. maybe you could influence or impact with some of the information that we've been putting out? Definitely. I, um, I have a couple of friends who uh, don't prioritize mm -hmm. uh, their funds the way that they should. They, I, I, and I, 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 I told them to look at it, I tell them to look at the class because it, the way it helped me, it can help you also. It can teach you how 
to better prioritize your money, how to better set a plan on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so, yes. And yeah, I mean, I would just say in general that you can always help, you know, those around you. Um, I, I've, I've once heard this quote, uh, if you aren't, if you, if you walk into a room and you're the smartest person in the room, then to leave the, the room. Yeah. So uh, kind of the same thing with the money, you know, if you're, if you're walking in and you can't help anyone because everyone around you is, you know, obviously doing better than you or things like that, you maybe need to leave the room and then that room that you are in, you can help anyone in there. You know, be it if it's, you know, show them where they can save a little extra or um, just even like some of the things you've covered, like how you can make a little extra money if you're trying to make a little extra money or just just things like that. So I think, uh, you know, any and everybody pretty much can always be helpful. Wow. Yeah, that, that's great. I like that quote. It, it, yeah, if you're the smartest one in the room, you're, you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people because right. you should always be in an environment that's going to uplift you and help you to get better. So, uh, and one of the things that we want to do with this class is, like you say, we learn for ourselves individually. We want to teach each person who is listening, but also get an accountability partner, get a, get a uh, person who can take this journey with you. We all know someone who can benefit financially. We're not, all, everybody's not doing everything perfectly. So we should want to always positively impact other people. So definitely spread the message out to, to other people. Uh, and I know, Brandon, you kind of said this, but I don't know when you want to be a millionaire, but what do you expect your financial situation to be like in five years and then in 10 years, both of you? You, you want me to go? Yeah. You can go first, yeah. millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a, the goal that I kind of set, and it was kind of just an umbrella goal. I haven't you know, necessarily just smashed it down, but mm -hmm. uh, I did kind of set to try to be a millionaire by 40. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a hefty goal, but you know, mm -hmm. it's what goals should be. They should be hefty and something that you uh, strive for. Um, and. Mm, okay, now I don't know how old you are, so. Right. <laughs> you say by 40, so how many years we got? So we got nine more years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so okay. we, have, uh, we have nine more years and plenty more dollars to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we're not so. there. But like I said, you know, it's just kind of a goal and to kind of, you know, press myself for it. So mm -hmm. um, I guess maybe a more realistic goal that I've actually set for myself is, is uh, 50. But, you know, when I kind of <laughs> set that for myself, I did state 40. And that's kind of what right. I continue right. to, to right. go after and strive right. after. But, um, but the other thing is you have to have a plan. Once you set the goal, right. then you got a plan as right. to how I'm going to get there. Right. And you monitor and track it, you know, every year to see where you are and what you need to be doing. Right. Yeah. So then, in terms of um, my goals and uh, in terms of my family, um, pretty much uh, just uh, savings, um, and we uh, a little bit with uh, stocks and uh, mutual funds. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know what, y'all? I, I guess whenever whenever I hear whenever I hear that, I always like to jump into where Philippians four and fourteen says. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Thank you. And, 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 and that's when it comes back to this being a Bible class. Mm -hmm. Because we know that if God be for us, all mm -hmm. things are possible. So, so, so you know, we, we, we think about you, so well, I want to be this at this at, at this particular age. But if God be for you, right. who can be against you? Mm -hmm. So I just I always like that. That's, my, that's that, that hook that, that we put God first. Yeah. And all things are possible. All things are possible. Okay, Jim. Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, my financial situation within the next five years, I want to have a little bit more in savings because my goal is to purchase a home by 35. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or no later than 40. Mm -hmm. Just turned 30, so mm -hmm. I got a little time. <laughs> 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 yeah. But that, that, that's, that's the goal. I want to purchase a home I, and um, grow from there. Okay. Okay, I would like to ask you all, because uh, I grew up in a family where we didn't talk about money. I want to know, did you all talk about money? Did, when you, you know, did you hit the ground running when you were 18? Did you, what did money mean to you all when you heard money? For me, as a child, I thought money grew on trees. <laughs> <laughs> as all I'm just, I'm, that, that's just true. But, you know, seriousness, uh, we had issues, but we didn't know it. We didn't know it because, fortunately for me, 
I grew up right here in Independence Heights and where my house was, grandfather was right down the street. Mm -hmm. Grandma yeah. right down the street. Yes. So I'm, 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 I was, we was okay. So when we needed something, yeah. we had yeah. other people to go ask for. If, if mama didn't have it, Papa, you got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grandma, you got it. Mm -hmm. Ain't you got it. Or mm -hmm. even across the street from Mr. Lee. Right. Yeah. Uh, but back back then, you know, I knew that there was an issue with money. Never knew, never grasped the concept of how how it was, mm -hmm. but I knew we didn't have everything we wanted, but we had everything we needed. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that, that last sentence that you just said, uh, Gerald, that kind of uh, ties into, I guess, how I was raised with, with money and um, more so with my grandfather. It was, uh, you know, I'll get everything that you need, but I'm not going to get everything that you want. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, simply because anytime a kid goes into the store, they always want something. <laughs> like everything. So, um, but I, I think that is kind of what stuck with me, and that's kind of how I am now. You know, I'll get you whatever you need. You know, my son and my wife need anything, you can get whatever you need. But if you just want something, well, now we need to look at it. Is this something that we need to pay for, yeah. something that we need? So uh, that's kind of my, uh, I guess, mantra is, you know, need, go ahead and get it. But want, and we kind of need to take a second look. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, we, we hope one of the other things that comes from this is that each generation gets better and better. Because from my generation, when I was growing up, uh, like I said, we had everything we need. I never had a concept of money at all because we didn't really get to spend money. You know, my mama just brought us what we needed, and we just had what we needed, and that was it. You know, so I didn't have a concept of money. When I got grown, I had never seen a check. I didn't know what a credit card was. I mean, I knew, I knew nothing about anything like that. So, uh, so it was a unfamiliar, strange world when I had to start dealing with money. So hopefully each generation is getting better and getting better and hopefully this class and many other financial education classes, workshops and sessions, books and things like that will help the next generation to be more conscious of money and the, the how it can be used, the benefits of it, how it can serve others and you know the responsibility God has given us as far as having stewardship over any of the resources you know that he has put in our lives so mm -hmm. but a lot of times we don't realize it that we learn from how we grew up yeah. and what we're exposed to or not exposed to you know so uh, uh, I just wanted to make a, one other point um, mm -hmm. one thing that is just from something that you said just kind of triggered it but when my grandmother used to give like my, my cousin my sisters and I have uh, sisters and brothers uh, lunch money she would give us a month's worth of lunch money in dollar bills mm -hmm. so you know essentially you know without knowing it this was teaching you money yes. you know you have your month's worth of lunch money so you can either you know every day spend your two or three dollars whatever it is until you get to the end of the month or let's say you wanted you know a fancy meal or you even wanted to go get something outside of the lunch room you know mm -hmm. spend mm -hmm. on something other than food right you could spend that but then you know i have this much <laughs> left for the rest of the month to spend so mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. without knowing it you know you kind of Right. Yeah. I'm gonna try it there with me, but that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he always ran it was off. Gone, it was gone the, 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 the first week, even 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 when we used to go uh, camping with the Boy Scouts, uh, when we go to the uh, Boy Scout store at summer camp, we all in there trying to spend all our money. All your and money. Brother Allen was like, "Look, y'all gonna be here all week. Don't come to me Save asking to buy ice cream." <laughs> But see, so now we need to have those conversations also when we do that, and that's how we can help help them understand. But yeah, like you say, that's what a kid does. Yeah. So, um, so I would like you all are young men. So I just like to ask you about the prospect of retirement. Hmm. Thirty one year old. When do you plan to retire? <laughs> I plan on retiring at sixty five just because I want to see if I can make it. <laughs> that, that, that's all. <laughs> Are y'all gonna get on okay. my nerves at sixty? You gonna get on my nerves at sixty-five? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. To be honest, in terms of retirement, I mean, I don't necessarily have a date or or a um, time frame in mind, you know, because I just feel like I'm one of those people who would always want to work or always kind of need to do something. I don't sit around too long and just kind of need to get into something. So, I mean, even if. Um, I would finish, you know, I guess finish what I'm doing. I'd kind of tra transition in, into something else. So in terms of a time limit or a time span, I wouldn't 
really have a date that I want to put on it. So. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to bring that up because normally when I ask someone when do they want to retire, most people will say 65 because I think as our society we have been trained yeah. because of Social Security and different things, you right. know, to say we want mm -hmm. to retire. But retirement is really a function of money, and a retirement doesn't mean right. you don't do anything. Right. Retirement just says that I don't have to do anything right. or I can do what I want. <laughs> right. And that's what I want people to understand. Uh, retirement, because I actually retired from Prairie View uh, three mm -hmm. years ago. Productive people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I retired from Prairie View in August of 2017. But I immediately, I was already working another job at that time. I was doing the financial uh, education, actually, then. I did it three years part-time while I was working at Prairie View, and so I just transitioned into doing uh, financial education, you know, because, like you said, I don't want to just not do anything. Plus, I, I, I see the value in it. I, I see the need for it, you know, for so many people. So when I say retirement, I'm saying, are you going to be in a situation where if, you weren't able to work or didn't feel like working or there was nothing you wanted to do, can you still sustain your level of your lifestyle right. that you want? Right. That's what retirement is. Just are you able to sustain the lifestyle you want to live without being, a, you know, having to do, uh, be stressed out, you know, about right. if the bills are going to get paid and things like that. So I want people to think about that. Uh, retirement is not necessarily your age. It's, it's your finances and what you have in place. Um, okay, now I know y'all said we don't have to worry about time, so I can worry about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other question that I want to ask, and then we can get into our summaries, uh, Brother Allen, is how are you financially protecting your loved ones? And who do you? Yeah. Do I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me say this. Well, let, let me go back and paint the picture then. Okay, we have, <laughs> we have people who we care about and people that care oh, about boy, us. Okay, I had my mom, you know, um, for the last 10 years of her life before she passed, she was in dementia. She didn't really get too bad into Alzheimer's, but, you know, toward the end. And um, if we hadn't, you know, her, her 401K and 3B, 403B and all that stuff was her children because it was 11 of us. So, so we stepped up, you know, and did things that we need to do. But nowadays, people are having one or two children, three children, and your kids may be still working. They can't be there to take off and take care of you, and you know, because we we became her caregivers, you know, and stuff like that. Spending the night, I spent the night two to three times a week at her house, you know, and things like that. So, even though you may not have wife and children or something like that this time, you have people you care about. So when I say loved ones, and then people who care about you. So if something happens to you, we think of uh, protection as maybe life insurance, and we think that's just like burial insurance or if I die. But no, it's not, because we have chronic and critical illnesses. We have uh, injuries, disabilities, and things that happen where sometimes we may, somebody may have to come in and help and take care of us. That's a protection for people who love you and care about you because they don't want to see you not taken care of, and if you have nothing in place, what's going to happen? They're going to be stressed out, or they're going to be there trying to take care of you, and, you know, things like that. So, now, with that background, <laughs> how are you financially protecting your loved ones? And when I say that, it's what type of documents, estate planning documents, do you have in place, or should you have in place, first of all, and then what do you have in place? So, uh, currently, uh, what we have in place is uh, beneficiaries on all accounts, uh, life insurance, and a holographic will. The plan is to get to, if you give me a second, because I always have to uh, remember the name, a, I have to come back to the name, but it is a uh, trust, a revocable living trust. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the end goal that I want to get to, but I haven't, haven't gotten there yet. Um, and really, because all this kind of COVID stuff happened, but. Um, it might be even more reason to you know, more even more it. reason yeah and the person who uh, <laughs> doesn't have to have anything in place tell me <laughs> well for me if, if, if anything was to happen I, I do have life insurance and my uh, right now 
my mother and my uh, oldest bro older brother, I'm sorry, not oldest, my older brother are my beneficiaries um, because uh, it was when my father passed, he didn't have insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was a hassle on me. Yes. Uh, trying to figure out how I'm gonna come up with this money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I've always been the one to say, I'm not going to go sell no fish plate. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fish, no barbecue, no. Exactly, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to sell a plate. So in seeing that, in seeing the struggle, uh, thankfully I had people around me who were willing to step up and help me out. Mm -hmm. So I was able to take care of my father's services but I didn't want to put that burden on nobody else. Right. When it comes to time for me, I have my mom and I have four other siblings. They got life insurance, somebody better do something. <laughs> <laughs> and then see, and that's what I'm saying when we talk about like sharing the message. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody that you, I tell people that I come in contact with, anyone that you would feel responsible for if something happened to them, you need to make sure they have the right stuff in place that they have there, and other things, Brandon, I would say is uh, the power of attorney, your financial right. power of attorney, that was, that was some of yeah, your health care or medical so. power of attorney needs to be in place so mm -hmm. people can communicate with the doctor and things like that. Right. They, they don't have that permission unless you give it to them. Right. Then right. have, like you said, when he said holographic will, do people know what that is? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows what it is. Okay, can you, can you share with us yeah, what, what you're talking what about, is. a holographic so, will? <laughs> from my understanding, the holographic will is essentially a will that anyone can do from their home. You can write it up and this leaves some mm -hmm. uh, type of a, uh, I guess we can say a semi-legal document, I don't know if it's you know, completely legal, but mm -hmm. uh, a semi-legal document that would at least you know, um, give some direction on what you know, you're happen with your things mm -hmm. and stuff once you pass. So. Yeah, and I just wanted to make that uh, clear because uh, you know, a lot of times, People hear things, but they won't ask, what does that mean, you know, stuff like that. So a holographic will is basically a will, yeah, that you write and prepare at home, uh, basically. But um, I do want to say, and I have offered this before to Bella Vista, and I'm going to ask Sister Priest and Pastor, can I put it out one more time, that I do complimentary power of attorney, health, financial powers of attorney, health care powers of attorney, and wills. I offered it to all the members of Bella Vista back in March or April. I had some people take advantage of it, but I'll offer it one more time because as Brandon stated, during this time period, especially during COVID, we need to have these things in place. It's very important. And to me, love is an action word. You can say I love you all you want, mm -hmm. but if you say you, I love you and you die without insurance and you were able to get insurance, I'm, I have a problem with you. Like you said, I don't want to. I don't want to do a GoFundMe. I don't want to sell no fish dinners or barbecue. I don't want to be basking uh, the, the friends. I don't want to tell the funeral home to hold the body out right. two or three weeks right. because <laughs> till we get the money, you know. Uh, really, insurance uh, at the basic level, you know, enough to bury you at least, even if you're not trying to leave a financial legacy for other people so that they can can have a leg up maybe and continue on with their lifestyle, is is very minimal, and I think most people can't afford it. You need to look into it. So don't just assume you can't afford it. You need to look into it and put it in place if you can. So um, am I giving my summary? No, ma'am. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> and, but, but just like you said yeah. about looking to it, I'm just coming. It's just like Gerald said about uh, priority. Mm -hmm. That's a priority. Instead of you putting the, it, God forbid something would happen to you and you wasn't, you know, and you wasn't, and your family did what didn't have the means to bury you, and you didn't have that insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, that priority should be that right now. You should do it right. if you can afford to, because right. you know, again, y'all. I, I guess I, I go back to what the Bible says: when, when you hear the word, when you when you hear the word, that's when you're supposed to act on the word. Mm -hmm. It's just like being saved. When you when you hear when God speaks to you to to come and give your heart to, and your mind to him, that's when it's time to do it right then. Because if you wait, you may get outside that door and get hit by a bus. That's it. And you then you don't have, you're not saved, and, and you don't you have it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, and then I do want to say this, because I know people, a lot of people don't like life insurance because they think it's just death insurance. But there are a lot of living benefits to life insurance. We can't get into it now, but they have living benefits uh, based on, you know, what type of illness or you may have. We have long-term care if, if for people if you need to have 
somebody coming into the home or if the person needs to be in a facility. And one of the ways that you can get to your millionaire status is through <laughs> life insurance. Mm -hmm. Yes, cash value life insurance. So we'll talk later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, and, 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 and I just want, of course, and I just wanted to ask is, uh, for both of them. And it's me. Are, are y'all doing anything to make any extra money on the side? Or y'all do y'all have like a any hustle. kind of side <laughs> <A> hustle? Side <laughs> hustle. <laughs> well, um, at one point I was doing um, audio visual for the Buffalo Soldiers Museum. Okay. Uh, so I do the small stuff like that. If somebody needs a favor or some uh, somebody need me to come take pictures at a wedding or something, I've done mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But nothing, nothing yeah. every day. Every day. But yeah. But I mean, what about you? Brandon? Yeah, uh, actually a uh, similar, um, some like audiovisual stuff for different companies. I used to work for the movie theater at Cinemark and sometimes I would do little videos. We'd like play in the lobby and stuff. So yeah. uh, I've done that and um, uh, side, I guess that's kind of it for side stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And, and, and y'all know what, it's, it's, it's uh, I, I guess like I say, I, I, it always come back to me this as, as being a Bible study class because we know that God is in control mm -hmm. of all of our lives, and 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 that's the that's the uh, like I said that's what really excites me more the finances. Again, it go back to, to uh, Matthew three and sixteen. You seek ye first, and I'm gonna give the stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't that that's one thing that I always thought about that if you do what God wants you to do, God, but God, God is not a deadbeat father. Yeah, right. God yeah. takes care of His children, you know. And I mean, if it's financial or health, or even when you, even if you have health problems, he give you the the peace mm -hmm. in the middle of the storm. Amen. So he takes care of his children regardless of what we what we going through, or what we have to go through. But 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to one of our scriptures that uh, that that Malachi uh, mm -hmm. ten that they bring you all the tithes to the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herein with the Lord of hosts. I will. Open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that ye shall not be there shall not be room enough to for you to receive. And both of y'all said and and and, and, <laughs> and, and both of y'all said that what you do on the side, sometimes you, you make we, we call it we make money on the side doing right. some of the same things. But you know, we always think about money and tidy mm -hmm. as far as the money that we give to the church. But right now, you all are giving y'all your time to the church, you know, and so by you giving your time to the church, mm -hmm. this is this is like we talked about last week about mm -hmm. labor. This is part of your labor. This mm -hmm. is part of the labor that y'all do to give back to the church. Even if you get a stifling from the church, mm -hmm. it's nothing compared. that would be compared to what you would be making when you do it on, the, on your on your side, or if you were doing this in. Uh, this was your regular job, right. and that's something that you know. Always, we always want people to think about it for the the time and what we give to God is that our time mm -hmm. is just as valuable as Amen. our money. Yes, yes. You know, because when you think about how much you Lord, make an hour, yeah. <laughs> or, or how much your salary is per year, right. and if you just divide that up into how much time you spend at church, just think about it. <laughs> I mean, and your expertise, and that's part of the, the labor that God gives us that gift. And that ability to use our gifts, and that's part of the gift. And and again, you all, it, it just came up because you all are using you you all's gifts for what God gave y'all to mm -hmm. not only make money on the outside, but also to do it for it's His key. glory mm -hmm. right here. And that's that's just it, it's, it's always like to bring that up to where you know when we think about you know you always think about it's just money, but it's your time and your talents, and only what we do for Christ will last. That's, mm -hmm. I'm just, I always have to okay. study. Bible study. <laughs> no, that, see, y'all see, we, we, we're a good couple. We make a good team, don't we, y'all? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I told him that's, that's his role. So uh, thank you. And the, the only thing I want to say, I want to end this with, with two things. Uh, the memory verse we had from uh, session six when we did it said, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's Psalms 90 and 12. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, I think that a lot of people probably were stunned when we found out about Bo Chadwick Boswick, Bosman yesterday, or day before, when he passed uh, at the age of 43 with uh, the height of his, uh, you know, career and, you know, done so many great things. And I was look personally looking forward to seeing him, you know, do a lot more. 
but we don't know. We do have to number our days, and God has already told us that we don't know what we have. But we know we have right now, and we have a responsibility, and that's what stewardship is. It's using that responsibility, carrying out the responsibility God has given us over any type of resources, people, money, time, whatever he has allowed us to, to have at this time. So like uh, Brother Allen was saying, you know, it's good to hear the information, but we have to act on it. If we don't act on it, it, it means nothing, and we've just kind of... Uh, kind of wasted uh, some of the abilities that God has given us to move forward in life and to become become more Christ-like, to help the church, to help our fellow men, which, you know, we know that Jesus said he came to serve, and we know that that has to be our responsibility and our priority uh, here on earth also. So I'll just let uh, Brother Allen go ahead and close it out. Okay, we'll, 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 since we do have nobody to tell us to stop recording, so we have a <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I that, was, that, was, that, was back to that, that was referencing what you were just saying was back to that scripture faith without works is dead you know if you know you you know it, it is it's, I mean if you could you could say I believe in it and y'all that's, that's back to that uh that's back to that uh I don't know I guess it, I guess it's a, a man proverbs where the uh where the person they were at Niagara Falls and they had this this rope strung out this cable strung across Niagara Falls and this guy got this this tight rope uh, walker, he took this wheelbarrow, put it in the, put it on the on the rope, and walked across the Niagara Falls. <laughs> came back, and then they said, "Man!" Now, but before he did that, the people were saying, "Well, he did." He said, "Do you believe he can do it?" "Oh yeah, he can do it." "You believe he can do it again?" "Yeah, I believe he can do it again." He said, "Well, get in here, and let me see." <laughs> <laughs> get in the, you get in the barrel, let, let, let me see. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? If you really yeah, if you really, yeah. and then that's where the rubber meets the road. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. That's when it's real. That's when it really becomes real. That's when faith <laughs> really becomes real. Oh, because we can talk about it all day. We can make it with these little nice rose petals and what have you. But until we do it, yeah. and that's what it says, it's impossible to please God without what? Faith. Without faith. And God wants us to be, it's, 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 and back to that where two or three and they labor. We have to be doing something. God saves yeah. us, but he didn't just save us to sit down. He saved us for us to go to work and, and, and make this world a better, I mean, and, and show the world that if he be for us, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, and that's, that's the thing that, uh, like I said, that's why I just, you know, this, and, and pl especially with our young folks and, well, our folks, but I'm not going to go there. Uh, sister, we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had said that, uh, did you want to say that we said that we were going to say what the class meant to us as far okay. as. Okay. Well, basically, uh, we just want to give a summary of what the class means to us and why we felt that it was so important to do this. I, I see the need. I see tremendous need. I see a lot of hurt and pain and suffering because just because people are not handling their finances correctly, I see, uh, and I, I feel like I have knowledge that I can share, so I want to be able to come out here and share it. I feel like probably until until I'm not able to function anymore, God take, calls me home, that I will be sharing this message. It's that important to me. And as we stated, it's not about the money. It's about the quality of life. It's about how you can help other people. It's about how you can sow into the church. It's about what God wants us to have and, and you know in our lives. So basically, like I said, uh, when I grew up, I knew nothing about money. And actually, most of my adult life, I knew nothing about money. I came into uh, financial education six years ago, uh, right before I was about to retire, actually, and I saw the difference that it even made in my life at that point, and I realized what it, difference it could have made. I would have retired a millionaire, Brandon, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but for you young people, I can help you retire a millionaire, believe me. It's, mm -hmm. it's very doable. So I just... Uh, All things are possible. No, understand that all things are possible if you only believe, if you have the faith, and if you're willing to put in the work. Right. And sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Sometimes you can't go by, I don't know, some women, maybe red bottoms. What would the men buy? You know, that coach purse or my course purse or Jordan's. Or, yeah, you know. So some, sometimes, I mean, you, you have to, I don't know if you call it a sacrifice, but you have to prioritize and not do those types of things so that, Further down the road, at the age of 50, you are a millionaire, or you can retire 
and do whatever it is that you want to do. But it's a give and take. You're not going to have everything all the time. So that's the message that I want to get out to people. And I'm, I, I'm excited about having the opportunity to have been able to share with you all. And, and since I, I guess my, my summary of, the, of this was, again, is that knowing that and being blessed enough to see some of the things that, that God has showed me over the, over the time of, the, of these 60 years and uh, knowing you haven't been perfect, but God's grace and mercy yes. kept me. You know what I mean? I, when, when, I, when I was listening at, at service uh, on TV this morning, it was saying that the men were singing, uh, if it had not been mm -hmm. for the Lord on my side, where would I be? You know, and when I think about that, when I think about it, I'm like, ooh. Wow. You know, if it had not been for God on my side, ooh. ooh well, yeah. I mean, I'm with you there. And, and you know, and it, and it ain't when I think about it, if it just had been me, mm. you know, yeah. it, it's not a, it wouldn't be a pretty, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be right here right yeah, now. Right, I probably wouldn't be sitting here yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's, that's one of the things that, that when you realize, and then you think about the gospel, and the gospel is the good news. Yes. And the only thing that's doing is telling what God has done for you. Yes. And telling, and, and, and then you use that scripture to where that God has no respect for a person. Mm -hmm. So if he did it for me, he'll mm -hmm. do it for you. And that's the thing to where you, you, and then the older you really get, you start to realize mm -hmm. it, that, that, that it's really, it really is all about God. Yes. Because we can't do nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? We wouldn't, you know, and I look back and say, and think of some of the things I did, you know, mm -hmm. people would, Y'all would think I'm lying most of the things because, because I've done a whole lot of stuff. I mean, but, but you know, it's, it's been some tough stuff, too. But, I mean, really, but you realize that it's only grace and mercy. Yes. That's the, that's all, that's the bought us this far. And, and that's, why, that's why it's so important. And then even the thing that, that, I, could, that I remember when, it was, when I was a child and, uh, and my mother would we'd bring us to Sunday school. And we'd have. They're talking to Okay. All right. Well, good. <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> and it's quick. You know, when Baba would bring you to, to church, and you know, they give you that Sunday school money to put in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that'd be the money that you, that you know, you'd give. Right? You start learning how to give. And then I can remember my father used to tell us that. Uh, he, he said, man, you know, the only thing a poor man has is his credit. But he said, but if you have good credit, mm -hmm. you can get anything you want. <laughs> And you know, you think about credit, yeah. not realizing, now you look at credit score. Mm -hmm. You go to a bank and tell them, well, my uh, credit score about 800. And you know, they think about, wow, you know, what you want? Right, yeah. You know, what kind of interest rate do you want? want? Mm -hmm. You know, then they tell how you, you tell yeah, them, you tell jump. Them. <laughs> right. And they say, and they, then high. you ask, they ask their respect. <laughs> what they say, how high? How high? Because <laughs> you have that ability. And, when, and, and the thing about it, that's real. And, and, and God, you know, it's just the grace and mercy mm -hmm. that God just show you some things for us to learn, you know. And, and I mean, and then, and like I said, we just get to tell the good news of what God can do and what he will do. Mm -hmm. You are, you young fellas, man, I, on, on behalf of <laughs> me and Sister Martin, we want to really say thank you. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. Yes. No yeah. Thank you all for being. Also, I want to say thank you for being, for, for always being here with us. <laughs> <laughs> I right. know you were captain for it, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for always Amen. being here. Amen. We'll be free. <laughs> oh, Father in heaven, oh, Lord Jesus Christ, oh, Father God, we just want to ask you, God, to please forgive us for, for all of our sins, please, oh, Lord. Lord. And Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. God, we, God, one thing we cannot ever say enough of is thank you, Lord, because, God, we know if it had not been for you on our side, Lord, where would we be? And Father, again, we just say thank you, Lord. And God, we just ask God that, that, that the people who see this class, Father, just believe it, Lord, and just make it real in their hearts, Lord. God, just make you real in their hearts, Lord, and realize, God, that, that if you be for us, it ain't nothing that nobody else can do against us, Lord, because, Father, you are the Son, Father. You are the glory, Lord. God, you are everything, oh, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord, the, the beginning and the end. And, Lord, again, we just say thank you, Lord. And, Father God, we just ask, God, that, that, that let us not just be an empty wagon making noise, but, God, let us put these principles, Father, these things that we saw, put them in the press, into practice, Lord. Yes. And all the things that we do be for your glorification. 
And Father God, all of these blessings, we just want to ask in the name of your mighty son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.